Good day fellas, I hope you are ready for your daily dose of skill and today we are waking up on quite good news, well the news was released yesterday though we are having a new line coming into the game uh, and I want to tell you one thing, you are going to find the survey um, in the uh, in the first pinned comment or in the description, please take your time to do that. It will take five minutes and it can make a difference. Um, pretty much this survey is all about the Italian tank destroyers. Uh, actually tank destroyer in this case and where gaming is asking to raid what do you think about the tank looking into the soft stats. So please take a look and make your own decision. I do not want to comment on this so I won't influence you. But if you have five minutes, Please do the survey. And now, without further ado, uh, fellas, movie time. Let's go. In 2018, a branch of Italian medium tanks with new auto reloading mechanics was added. In 2021, they were joined by heavy tanks. And now, thanks to a lot of meticulous work, Italian tank destroyers will appear in the game. Only a few of the vehicles in this branch were ever physically built and some of them only had incomplete design plans. But thanks to the surviving draft and archive materials, we managed to follow the line of engineering thought and materialize these vehicles in-game. Pretty much what they thought, the, uh, what they are saying, the tanks are pretty much made up. I, I, by any means, I am not historian uh, speaking about the tanks or or anything else, right? Uh, but uh, I can translate this, the tanks are made up. Meet the Italian tank destroyers. The Italian Army Command had ideas about creating self-propelled artillery guns as far back as the second half of the 1930s. However, initial experiments were unsuccessful, mainly because of the attempts to mount a 75mm gun on a light tank chassis. Sometime later, the German army started using the Stug 3. This vehicle was of keen interest to the Italians and inspired them to try creating their own self-propelled gun again. Together with the engineers from the Ansaldo Engineering Company, the Italian army managed to create a prototype, the Semavente M41. This is this is looking like another tier 5 shitter to be fair with you. I mean it is going to be like Stug or Su-100 or well actually not Su-100, Su-76. So I, uh, I do not have too much hopes on this one to be completely honest with you. Its look and idea resembled its analog, the Stug 3. A non-rotating cabin was mounted instead of the turret and turret platform, and a 75mm howitzer was put there. The main series of this tank destroyer was produced on the Caro Amato M1441 medium tank chassis. Due to this, the vehicle in the game will have low maneuverability but excellent concealment and view range. <laughs> the transition to the tank destroyer branch will be available from the tier 4 P2640 medium tank. Okay, I can translate this. Uh, you have no armor and you have uh, no mobility, uh, but you can snipe from the back. So like a typical tank destroyer, nothing unusual. That's why the Semavente M41 will help players smoothly adapt and adjust their playstyle for the following tank destroyers of the branch. Tier 6 is occupied by the Semavente M43 Basotto. The development and production of this vehicle started when the Italian command belatedly started to realize that enemy tanks had clearly improved their armor protection and armament characteristics. The solution should have been the Semovente M43 tank destroyer. Gameplay-wise, it resembles the previous vehicle of the branch. The differences are in its armament. This TD is armed with a 102mm gun with high accuracy and penetration which allows it to easily cause damage to heavy vehicles at a distance. Its armor compared to Tier 5 has also improved, but you shouldn't rely on it in close combat. <laughs> in general, the first two vehicles of the branch are classic tank destroyers with a... I will translate what our gaming is saying. Uh, lower tiers might bounce shot or two, but if you are going to be aggressive, you are going to get slaughtered by the uh, tier 6s, 7s and 8s and whatever you are going to meet with this. I will do the translation, don't worry. The cabin. They are slow with good armament and average armor for their tiers. However, the subsequent vehicles can't be compared to regular ones. 
They're completely new tank destroyers with unique features that will unlock from tier to tier. Tier 7 is represented by the Semovente Contra Caro Mod 1956. It looks the like vehicle was designed after World War II and doesn't resemble the previous TDs in the branch much. This is mainly because Italian tank building came out of hibernation and the revision of its concepts began in the 1950s. American designs with some additions formed the basis of the new TD project. First off, the vehicle received a rotating turret with a limited gun traverse arc of 60 degrees. This is absolutely amazing to have the ability to rotate your turret. Look at this tank like Su-130. Um, it is very, very, very nice thing. It is very nice to have something uh, rotational. And excellent gun depression angles. Minus 10 is good. Secondly, a drum type autoloader was installed for a 105mm gun. And lastly, the vehicle received excellent frontal armor that allowed for close range combat. The Semovente Contra Caro Mod 1956 clearly shows what the gameplay of the following vehicles in the branch will be. Okay. The next TD is the Contra Caro Mod 67. Work on this vehicle began it in the bulky. 1960s it looks when Italy cooperated closely with German and Swiss industries. However, tank destroyers were generally becoming a thing of the past at that time, losing to anti-tank missile armaments. So it was no coincidence that this TD remained in the preliminary design stage. In the game, this vehicle acquires a more modern look while keeping the rotating turret feature. Now the gun traverse arc is not 60 degrees, but 90. This is strong. To be able to rotate your turret 45 degrees angle in each side or 90 overall, um, it is very, very strong and this is looking good. Plus on top of that, how armor is looking like, uh, it looks like armor tank. But once again, uh, do not be tricked by appearance. We need to play in order to see um, how is it looking like. 45 degrees to either side. The frontal armor is stronger compared to tier 7 and this affects the vehicle's mobility accordingly. It doesn't turn into the T-95, but it'll be difficult to change positions in it quickly. The Contra Caro Mod 67 is armed with an accurate 120mm gun with a drum-type autoloader and 10 degrees of gun depression. The vehicle has an interesting exterior feature, a noticeable slope of the turret ring. In reality, such a solution will allow for a more rational vehicle layout the crew could be in the cabin without increasing the height of the vehicle itself. In the game, such a design allows for blocking damage from behind cover while not decreasing gun depression on the sides, which happens in some tanks or turreted tank destroyers. At Tier 9, there's Contra Caro 1 MK2. The idea of this tank destroyer was inspired by joint American and German developments that corresponded with Italian views on tank destroyers. The concept of a tank destroyer with partial turret traverse, average mobility and excellent frontal armor was also implemented for this vehicle. What changed is its gun. The caliber increased to 127 millimeters, but the auto loader remained. Due to the sum of all its characteristics, the Contra Caro 1 MK2. What I am afraid, speaking about those tank destroyers, uh, where gaming is presented them like armored tanks, I'm afraid they are going to give them 200 millimeters of armor plus of the slope we are going to get 250 and everyone will penetrate you in the face. I am afraid of that. Uh, or if the tank destroyers won't have the weak spots frontally as well, this would be kind of bad thing. If you are meeting them as a tier 10, you will be uh, penetrating them with auto aim and gold. Uh, and if you are lower tier or equal tier but not shooting gold, then you can go and eat Kaku. That would be bad. Is an excellent candidate for the penultimate vehicle of the branch. The peak of Italian engineering, however, is the Contra Caro 3 Minotauro. You can see the influence of both American and German tank building in this vehicle. This tank destroyer. 
This slope is actually looking pretty nice, right? I can see the cupola, everyone can see cupola. Lower plate is looking kind of V-shaped or let's say E3 lower plate, which is pain in the ass to penetrate. So maybe, maybe this is going to be something, you I never know. I all the ideas that were developed by the previous tank destroyers of this branch. A rotating turret with a limited Good. gun traverse arc of 90 degrees and 10 degrees of gun depression. Excellent frontal armor that is well in balance with the vehicle's mobility. And the 130mm... <laughs> uh, okay, we'll translate. Tank is slower, Seth. ...gun with an autoloader. But that's not your regular autoloader. Five shells, good damage per shot. 24 seconds to reload the entire drum. Shells, good damage per... <clears throat> Five thirty alpha damage and typical time of the typical reload time of the eight seconds. <sighs> okay, where to start? First of all, twenty seventh. Why you cannot just give this tank um, five hundred thirty alpha damage and? Why does it need to have autoloader if the reload between the shells is 8 seconds? This is absolutely nuts, fellas. This is absolutely nuts. I mean, 24 seconds is not that long to reload, to be completely honest with you. But still, 8 seconds is a lot. And the thing is, this is not boostable. You can use you can use extradations, you can use ventilation, you can use whatever you want. You cannot boost this. Brother in arms and so on, so on. This can be boosted, but this one not. A shot, 24 seconds to reload the entire drum, and 8 seconds between the shots. You can hardly say this is something classic. No, it's not. And if all these characteristics might look strange on paper, the Italian can also surprise you in practice. You should play this vehicle as a regular tank with a cyclic gun. With its alpha damage and reload, one drum is enough to outshoot many opponents. Yes, you will pay for it with the reload of the entire drum, but first of all, it takes only 24 seconds, and secondly, the enemy will never know when exactly you're reloading. <sighs> what you are smoking, Bergoming. Okay, uh, meanwhile, you are going to meet the tank like E5, uh, who has 400 alpha damage and who is reloading for 6 seconds. So how the things in reality is going to look like. Uh, or E100, let's say E100, this is more popular tank. E100 will spank you for 750 with a hit rounds in the face. Um, you will shoot him once and then E100 will side scrap on the corner. And you won't be able to do absolutely anything about this. And from what I can tell and from what you can hear is the tanks are slow. So this is going to be interesting. At any moment of battle and in any situation, opponents can't just track how many shells you have. You can start reloading after three shots, so the countdown starts. The enemy counts eight seconds before your next shot. Then they think that you're hesitating for a few seconds. A few more seconds to roll out. Mutual intimidation and so on. And only then comes the moment your opponent realizes you are reloading. But what they didn't take into account is that there's little time left until the reload is complete. Such a concept of the autoloader makes the Minotauro an absolutely unique vehicle. And most importantly, it makes it a vehicle that you should always be aware of. Everything is looking fine on the paper, how they are presenting this and how they are trying to create the hype. Uh, but reality is a bit different. Uh, I don't really think this is going to be as great as they are, um, as they are uh, presenting it. I think we are going to have another average or below average tank line which no one is going to play with. Uh, that's what I think. But, uh, you know, that's only me and I need to check out the things. I need to play with the tank to say is it good, is it bad or how is it looking like we do not have any um, things known apart the inner clip reload which is the uh, eight seconds between the shells because in theory facing them in a tower means always facing a vehicle that will win in a duel and even if the opponent manages to figure it all out 
count all seconds, and think of all the options in their head, they will also need to penetrate your TD. So this is what makes the new Italian an excellent vehicle for close-range combat. It's ready to dictate the terms of battle, it's ready to adapt to the enemy's style, and it's ready to win. In addition to researchable vehicles, the Italians will also have a Tier 8 premium tank destroyer. This will potentially be the Semavente Contracaro Mod 1964 Vipera. Work on this combat vehicle should have turned into the development of turreted tank destroyers, conducted by the Otto Malara company. Unfortunately, this vehicle remained in the draft stage. One of the reasons was the appearance of a new, more promising project. However, such an interesting vehicle couldn't yet appear in the game. So it's the Semavente Contracaro Mod 1964 Vipera that heads to the Super Test first, based on which the characteristics of the whole branch will be adjusted while keeping the overall concept. Okay, I will translate this. This is what we're gaming is doing survey about and take a moment please to do the survey. It is important. I have done it myself. I know what they are asking for, but I do not want to give any hints whatsoever what I answer it. Just not to... Um, just not to say, oh, vote for this or something. Uh, pretty much what they are saying, they are testing this vehicle at first. Everything is very early stage, so do not expect it to come in two weeks or in one month or in probably half year. Uh, what we can expect, we can expect probably this line to be in the game in 2023. At least that's what I want to believe, and this is only me, right? Uh, but what they are saying, they are saying uh, uh, this vehicle is going to... Uh, uh, help us to make a decision how the things are going to look like and how people will react and how people will enjoy this tank overall. In terms of gameplay, the vehicle will resemble a researchable Tier 10 TD, but its characteristics will clearly refer to the researchable Tier 8 vehicle. The Tier 8 Contracaro Mod 67 features decent dynamics and armor, plus it has a menacing 120mm gun with a 5-shell autoloader. The familiar gun depression angles of 10 degrees and a rotatable turret with a gun traverse arc Good. of 90 degrees. Just like the Tier 10 TD, this vehicle is fit for combat on the front line. It also features an unconventional autoloader. The reload of 8 seconds between shots and the high damage per shot allow for winning one-on-ones against many opponents. However, they changed it from the eight seconds between the shots to six seconds between the shots now. Uh, just let you know, it's not eight anymore, it's six. Also like the Tier 10 TD, this premium vehicle will have a deterring factor, drum reload. But unlike in regular tanks with the auto loader, the reload won't keep you away from battle for too long, so you can reset your drum at any time. For example, when you realize you don't have enough shells to finish off an opponent, or when you plan to destroy one enemy vehicle and switch to another one right away. In such situations... <laughs> If you don't know why I'm laughing at looking at what kind of opponent enemies uh, he has, a Mike 65T, like literally the weakest tier um, 8 tank, and where gaming is presenting this as absolutely amazing monster to deal with. You know what is the reality with a tier 8 tanks? You are going to meet the tier 10s, 279E. If you so damn hard, you will forget your name and you will need to push the tampon upon your ass. You can start reloading. Uh, in the middle of battle. At the same time, due to the atypical reload between yeah. shots, your enemy still doesn't know what you're doing. Reloading one shell or the entire drum, and when they figure it out, you're nearly ready for a new duel. Absolutely it's insanity. hard to say which characteristics of this vehicle will be final. That's what tests are for. But it's already clear that the branch will have some unique gameplay, and the future premium vehicle will be among the first okay. to help you get familiar with it. We plan to create a special group of tank destroyers with strong armor, rotating turrets, and an auto loader. This means their unpredictability in combat, depending on the tactics, will depend solely on you. Okay, fellas. Uh... As every of you saw, uh, we are having a new um, line in the game or we are going to have a new line in the game. Once again, I want to highlight this, how important it is for you to participate in this survey and check out and just to say your opinion, what do you think about this? Um, 
All and all, I always think the variety is the spice of life. It is not bad to have a new line or something, but obviously everything is depending how our gaming is going to present this uh, and how our gaming is going to uh, bring this out. Uh, from, uh, from what I can see, um, let's say the tier 10 is looking very interesting and I cannot say it is looking interesting from the good side. I haven't seen the armor yet if this tank is like an e3 okay fair enough uh if this vehicle is like uh, um jack pizda you have armor on the paper but armor doesn't work if people are loading gold or something then this gg you know it's very important thing to say nevertheless new line in the world of tanks exciting news um I am feeling happy about this once again. Variet is the spice of life. And let's see how the things will look like with a premium tier 8 uh, tank destroyer. Uh, so our gaming is going to lead the way, right? Uh, that's about it. That's what I have for you today. Uh, it is good news. It is spicy news. And uh, yeah, the duel against the mx 65T, whew, it made my day. Anyways, love you all. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, obviously, feel free to share your opinion in the comment section down below. And see you very, very soon. Skill is out for today. Peace.